So when old men like me sit around a bar or sit around a legion or sit around uh, the kitchen table, the argument is like this. Who's the greatest NHLer from New Brunswick ever? Well, of the recent generation, you know, Jake Allen is quite popular. For the people that grew up in the uh, 70s and 80s, Greg Malone and Danny Grant and some other players. But for me, uh, this guy is number one. There's no doubt about it in my mind. You can't make the Hockey Hall of Fame be a Stanley Cup winner and a league scoring champion and not be the best ever. And he, even though he had a limited career in the NHL, he had such a diverse career in minor pro and maritime uh, hockey circles. He has to be, again, number one. Uh, one of the top 20 uh, New Brunswick athletes of all time in all sports, in my opinion. Of course, we're going to be talking about the pride of Moncton, New Brunswick, Gordy Drillon. Now, Gordy Drillon was inducted in the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1975. Um, the six foot, one hundred eighty six pound uh, right winger was uh, well known for his many uh, successful years in the Toronto Maple Leafs program. Even though he came up to the NHL in a very different uh, uh, format. Now, he first came to province with Aberdeen High School in New Brunswick in 1929 when he played two games. Now, in 1930, he skated with the Moncton uh, Chalmers Club, uh, the SNBJHL, 12 points in six games. Then, uh, 31, shared time with the Mon Moncton Athletics of the Maritime Junior Hockey League, where he had 15 goals in six games, and also played with Aberdeen in three contests. And 33 was with the Moncton Wheelers for a little while. And uh, 33, this is where it become really interesting, ladies and gentlemen. He played 11 combined games with the Moncton Hawks and the Moncton Swifts of the Maritime Junior Hockey League and the MCIHL. In 11 games, in a regular season, he had 24 goals, 6 assists for 30 points. And in the playoffs, uh, for Moncton, he had 3 points in 2 games. And with the Swifts, he had 17 points in 6 games, including 13 goals. So he scored 24 goals in 13 games, 31 points. Now in 34, he moved up to uh, the uh, Toronto uh, program with Toronto Young Rangers of the OHA Junior League. He had uh, 33 points in 11 games. Now, he also played that year with Toronto CCM of the TMJHL, uh, 1.2 games. 35, he split time with the Toronto Lions of the OHA and the Toronto Dominion squad. Combined that year, 29 goals in 22 games, 44 points in the playoffs. He had 6 points in 8 games. Now, the big shift for him, of course, came in the minor minor pro. Uh, he uh, he went on to play for one of the better teams in uh, the U.S. called the Pittsburgh Yellow Jackets of the AHL. He had 22 goals in 40 games. As 37, still some seasoning in the minors with the Syracuse Stars, five points in seven games, and here became the big call up to the NHL. 37 with the Leafs, 33 points in 41 games, including 16 goals and 17 assists with two playoff games. Now, from 1936 to 42, he was part of probably one of the most devastating offensive lines in Stanley Cup uh, playoff history. The Maple Leafs won a cup of 42 uh, with him. Now, he only played seven seasons in the NHL, again, six with Toronto and one with the Habs. He was noticed in the, in the, noted in the NHL for his deadly accurate shot. Now, statistics have said uh, it could be 1 in 5 or 1 in 4. Some people said 30% of his shots would go in. Now, he had a specific style of play that made him a leading scorer. He used his strong frame like a modern player to make it difficult for opposing defensemen to clear him from the front of the net. And a lot of people believe he, he invented or perfected the uh, the park uh, system, which if you follow hockey, he would park as, himself, especially in the front of the opposing netmire, to redirect shots or pick up or rebounds. Now, this style of play was mimicked and enhanced uh, by several players, and when it won him a scoring championships in '38, it drew a lot of interest. Now, future stars such as Phil Esposito, Dito Cicerelli, and Dave Anderchuk uh, mimicked his innovative style with great success. Now, when he was traded to the Habs for 43 season, he finished second on the team in goals scored. Now, at season's end, he cut his short his hockey career in the NHL and joined the Royal Canadian Air Force, serving for the remainder of World War II. 
Now, after the war, he worked as a hockey coach in Grand Falls, Windsor, Newfoundland in the 49th season, but he later returned to his native New Brunswick, where he was employed as a scout for the Maple Leafs, covering the Maritime Provinces. He eventually accepted a key job with the Brunswick Civil Service, and of course, he was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1975. Now, unfortunately, he passed away at age uh, 72 in St. John, New Brunswick, where he's also interred at the Ocean View Memorial Gardens uh, Cemetery. Now, uh, the awards and recognition are quite strong. 38, he was the Lady Bain Trophy winner, uh, also league scoring champion, first All-Star team in 38-39, second All-Star team in 42. Now, let me put this in perspective, ladies and gentlemen. 1938, that big season. 52 points. He was the second year in the NHL, 26 goals, seven point, seven goals in the playoffs. Next year, he had 18 goals in the regular season, seven in the playoffs. 1940, 21 goals, 41, 23 goals. But 42 in the championship uh, run, 23 games in a regular season, and uh, five points in the playoffs. Now, that year in Montreal, he had 28 goals, 22 assists for 50 points. Now, even uh, on the, uh, what do you call, his time in the forces, he spent time with the Toronto Army Daggers of the OHA Senior League in 44. He played with the Dartmouth SS, NS DHL in 45, as well as the Valleyfield Braves of the QPHL in 45. Now, 46 with the Halifax RCAF squad. He had 15 points in three games. 47 with the Charlottetown Legion squad of the NSSHL. He had 18 points in four games. And I don't know if these statistics are right, ladies and gentlemen, but if it's true, 53 points and 11 playoff games, including 41 goals. So that's probably one of the biggest playoff totals for any NSSHL player in history. Now, 48 with the North Sydney Victorias. He skated for a while. 49, he played with Grand Fall uh, Windsor uh, All-Stars uh, for the Nat NL Senior League and wrapped up with the legendary St. John Beavers. Uh, 1950 in the Brunswick Senior Hockey League with 72 points, including 48 goals in 69 games. Now, he was probably a money performer better than anybody else in NHL history. He played 311 games in the NHL, 155 goals, 139 assists for 254 points. But where it stands out for me is these playoff totals. Every season he played in the playoffs, he made a marked uh, effort to drive the opposing goalies nuts. In 50 playoff games, 25 goals, ladies and gentlemen. And each goal he scored was huge, was huge. Now, it was kind of weird here because Montreal was starting to rise as a, as a big franchise in the late 30s. In 1939, Toll Blake won the scoring title. But 38, for some reason, and there, there's been analytics talked about this, his 38 season was probably consistently, well, you can compare it, let's say, 48 uh, games. Uh, that season with the, the, the current format, he probably would end up with 100 points and 50, 50 goals, if you really look at it. But that year, in 55 total games, ladies and gentlemen, he had 33 goals and 60 points. And he would rarely take a penalty, ladies and gentlemen. In his whole career in the NHL, he took 56 minutes in penalties. And this was him. He was in front of the net all the time, getting slashed and moved. He never retaliated. The man, the man was a snake, ladies and gentlemen. The man was a killer. Uh, some reports in the Gazette and some reports in the New Brunswick and the Maritime media would basically said no one could stop him when he needed a score or wanted a score. The only person who could stop him was himself. Now, let's say if he, if he would have played NHL for a lot more years, all that Toronto Maple Leaf Cups of the 1940s would have been his, the late 40s. Uh, <coughs> imagine if he would have stayed and played with, uh, you know, uh, played with, uh, you know, the, the best years of uh, Rock and uh, Richard. So just as a sideline, ladies and gentlemen, to him with the Habs in 1943, I just want to put, uh, put this in perspective for you. When he started uh, playing with that squad uh, that year, this is 42-43. Let's look at the roster, ladies and gentlemen. Elmer Locke has started playing with them. Toll Blake was there. Lou Lamoureux, Butch Bouchard. Terry, Terry Reardon was there. But Modest had just pretty well uh, started. He had 11 points in uh, 16 games. Now, that was his first season in the NHL. 
So the Montreal Canadiens had the best player in New Brunswick history and the future greatest player of all time on the same team, ladies and gentlemen, for that season. So you can imagine if he would have stayed and played with, with on, the, on the line with Toe Blake and Elmer Locke and Richard, uh, even Joe Benoit, who was a good player. Can you imagine, ladies and gentlemen? Like I said, I think the reason he got the Hockey Hall of Fame was not the amount of seasons he played, but the concentration of excellence. So that's why I think he's the greatest NHL player in New Brunswick history. If anybody wants to disagree, that's fine. You can give an argument. But look at the stats. When I became a sports editor, ladies and gentlemen, when Dino Cicerelli came into the league, someone told me, uh, I was an older gentleman in Hamilton. He said, yeah, I see a lot of Gordy in him. I said, what do you mean Gordy Howe? No, Gordy Drummond. And I really understood. Now, I'm not sure there's many tapes on him when he's styled in front of the net, but I can imagine, if you look at the 72 Summit Series, Esposito, a little bit of a bigger player, but that style of play being in the slot and, you know, kind of uh, running interference, I can just imagine. And you know something there, ladies and gentlemen? If he would have played against Team Canada, against uh, some of the international play, he would have drove them nuts. Anyway, I have big respect for, for Gordy because, you know, there's different Gordys in Canadian sports history. You know, and we have our own Gordy, Gordy Howe, of course. There, and you know, when when Gordy Dwyer made it to the NHL, I said, "Oh, another Gordy in the NHL." You know, you you take a big mantle when you're Gordy in the NHL, because if you can live up to to the the strength of Gordy Dwyer and the overall hockey player of Gordy Howe and the excellence of execution, say like Bret Hart of Gordy Drillen, uh, you know, you made it. So that's the life and legacy of Gordy Drillen. If you like what we're doing here. Please give us a like, comment, or subscribe. And don't forget, just because you're in New Brunswick doesn't mean you can't finish off the play. We're nice people, but don't push us. Especially on a rink. If you've ever been to a senior hockey game in North Shore between Camelton and Dalhousie, and Dalhousie and St. Arthur, and Camelton and St. Arthur, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Don't push it too much because don't, you don't want to wake us up. You know, like the old Roberto Duran line. Don't wake me up, you're going to get knocked out. Have a good day.